So when I deployed in March, beginning of March to Afghanistan, we had a full church and we were not social distancing. And I leave the country and y'all go nuts. So I've come back to try to straighten things out. I'm sorry, I was thinking of this as I was coming up here. I said, I got to make sure I got my glasses to read. And I got my communion. And I said, I hope I don't trip coming up the steps. All of these things going through my mind where I'm trying to think of communion thoughts. And life has changed a lot. And uh, we keep talking about getting back to normal. And uh, getting back to normal and some things will be good. And there's some other aspects that uh, life's going to be good without getting back to normal uh, in some other areas. And I think there's a lot of growth that's going to come from this uh, as, as well. But um, today I want to talk with you just a few minutes about communion, uh, coming together. Some, sometimes people, will, will, I've heard say that the most important part of our worship service is our communion time. I, I, don't, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think it's all important. Uh, but sometimes people say that, and, it, and there is a lot of importance to it. Typically in our military chapels, we have communion once a month. Uh, when I lead a service in a military chapel, we have it every week. Uh, but uh, in a deployed location in Afghanistan, when uh, our, our chapels over there, they have it every single Sunday, Every Sunday, instead of just once a month. And I think it's very important uh, that they do. And, and, and when you're in a place like that, you might not make it to the next communion. And uh, so they like having it uh, um, weekly. When I was uh, deployed to Afghanistan in uh, 2014, there were times there people were wanting it daily and want us to bring communion around. It was a lot of communion uh, going on over there. And for good reason. For good reason, because at a time like this where we're focusing in, we're trying to focus in not only on what Almighty God has done for us, what Jesus Christ did for us in going to a cross, we're trying to focus in also on our lives. We're trying to think, you know, Lord, I mean, I'm about to partake of this fruit of the vine. I'm about to take uh, of this bread, and I have to consider my life and how I live for you every day. And I tell you, when, when, before I take communion, I'm often oftentimes I'm thinking, Lord, before I partake of this, please forgive me. Forgive me for all the things I've done. Forgive me those things I, I do that I don't even know I do. Lord, just uh, hold me close. Father, just forgive me. I think that's what we all want, and when we, when we partake of the Lord's Supper today, we, when we reflect on, on Jesus Christ, crucifixion, we also reflect on our lives. We think about how we live for Christ every day, or at least that's what I think we should be doing. So today, as we prepare our minds and our hearts, I'm going to read for... Uh, for us from 1 Corinthians. Chapter 11. Start at verse 23. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Church, let's go to God in prayer for our bread. Holy Father, Lord, thank you so much just simply for loving us, for preparing the way for us, Lord, for sending our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to this world, sending him, sending him, Lord, to die, but be resurrected again. Father, thank you for this bread that represents his body that he gave for us. Help us, Lord, to always partake of it in remembrance of him. 
In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Begin in verse 25, 1 Corinthians 11. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us go to God once again in prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, likewise, we just give you thanks once again for the blood of Jesus. Father, you loved us so much, you did just almost an unthinkable thing in sending your son to die for people who oftentimes will turn their backs on you. Father, thank you for loving us anyway. Thank you for preparing a place for us. Father, thank you for this fruit of the vine that represents that shed blood. Thank you for Jesus. In his holy name we pray, amen. Now, one thing I failed to mention, also in Afghanistan, uh, as chaplains, um, there's no alcohol uh, when you're deployed, except for chaplains, because we have wine. But, you know, sometimes I think people came to service for the wine, but it was very little. So if you were thinking that, that's not so. They came there to get closer to the Lord, I'm sure. We uh, have a time of offering, and uh, once again, the, uh, as has been mentioned already, the offering plates are in the back, so you can just uh, put your offering in that uh, as, as you leave this morning. But let's go to God in prayer for our offering right now. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for everything you provide for us every day. Father, we just give you praise and just, Father, just want to thank you. It's, life can be difficult sometimes, but we know that you're always there for us and you're always giving to us and taking care of us and, and loving us every day. Father, thank you for all the gifts of life. And today, as we give back to you, Lord, we just ask you to bless it. We just ask that everything that, that we give today, Father, will be used to further the kingdom. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. In his holy name we pray.